Anyways, you guys get the idea. It's it sounds like a bunch of really bad sounding guitars and then sounds like a bunch of acceptable guitar layers. So um let's yeah. Uh so it's all guitars. It's I used all of two guitars, one acoustic. Uh, yeah, so I'll get to that. The trumpet sounding thing at the end, or just now? This is a demonstration of is a all over? A like a scratching sound? Okay. Uh, so in any case, I'm going to do like a stem-by-stem -stem breakdown. So if you hear it, just tell me which one it is. All right. So, um, so you all can see the screen, right? Yeah. Also, I'm using Studio One, if anyone was wondering what it was. It's a fairly good. Uh, this is Studio One 3, or uh, Point 2. It's the cast. newest one that's out. Uh, I've been using Logic for the longest time, I think. It's been nine years of Logic, and it's been about three months of Studio One, but I'm fairly happy with it. Okay. So, um, the main sort of theme for for this character and the story, uh, initially I kind of wanted to use you know like an analog synth sound to 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 achieve that, but I just didn't have uh, any good plugins or or like any way to basically achieve that sound. So I had to settle for just doing it to guitars. It's also a lot more expressive to be able to do something using a real instrument than MIDI all the time. So I'm going to just play a little bit of the bass stem and then we'll, uh, we'll a do a quick breakdown. So it's basically this sort of loop where it sounds a little filtered. And uh, there are two patches, but it's the same take. I don't bother retaking. It's one is this. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. And this is just s simple, straight. It's to a medium sized um like cabinet like a two two by twelve si style cabinet so your headroom isn't much right so it starts overdriving as soon as you crank up the volume a little bit and I used a fender emulation to kind of get that drive the reason why I went for a fender over something like a mesa or something that that gives a lot more cast. low end and warmth is because uh, I wanted that top and that plank, that definition to kind of come through. The second one, and uh, this was my main tone, it's just that it, it can't carry itself, just being like a standalone tone, but, uh, was was done through an octave pedal. Now, what's funny about octave pedals is that they, they're not very good at tracking what what you're playing. So they start kind of twitching and glitching in the middle between like tones and it creates for like interesting sounds or oh, this is what it sounds like you can kind of hear how it's like changing pitch randomly so it it also had that like really nice like rubbery sort of synth sound but all I did was use a octave down then blend it and sent it through uh, to the to the same amp actually it's just a Fender, st Fender style amp which is clean and it and it started acting behaving weirdly so you get like this really quick snap back where it sounds almost vividly uh, processed. Here it is, together. This is a 
generation of Wirecast. So in this part, it's okay. It's still giving like a little bit of top end to that bottom end drive. But over here, I wanted it to kind of sound like a big piano knock. So the top end, the 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 higher amp gives gives me that clank, while the lower amp just gives me like a lot of bass rumble. Okay, moving on. Um, this is a demonstration what I finally of did cast. to get the bass to sound better and kind of sit in the mix was use a bit of two bus processing. Uh, anyone who knows what two bus processing is? Anyone? Okay. To, uh, basically, it's your regular bus processing where you bus out what was happening in your in your stems together, but then you look start sort of looking at this it as one sound, and so you don't really think about sense. You don't think about oh maybe I'll parallel it or whatever, and you use I would say heavier plugins or you know like better EQs. Uh, so I used just an EQ and a bit of compression and a chorus just so it starts sitting a little more in the mix let me just find this it here it's demonstration of wirecast so so basically i removed some of that mud that was happening and and i gave it a bit of lift so I finally settled for this bass sound. Just so it sounds more like a seven string guitar and it sits into the mix more than like that rubbery bass and that thing not sounding glued together. Not and now you can kind of hear how that hit sounds a lot bigger and together than it did before. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that on. And um as far as the other stems are concerned. The second m most processed stem out of the the, the lot this is a would have to be cast. the pads. So the way I did the pads was um, it's just my DI guitars. There's no amp. There's no cabinet simulation or a real amp and cab. I used a delay into a reverb, into a chorus, into a delay, into a reverb, and um, and it sounds like this. Hold on. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. But there's like a lot of high frequency content. So, so every time you're trying to make something that sounds like a little more lush and ethereal, uh, and and I used to make this mistake all the time before. It was like adding more and more reverb. The idea isn't like super long reverbs, but just reverbs that can blend into each other without taking up too much real real estate. So. I had two send tracks going. One was to a regular reverb of about three seconds or so, and the other one had a pitch shift going in straight. I used um, Little Alter Boy, something that I'll show you guys in a bit. Little Alter Boy by uh, Soundwise, thank you. And and I pitched it. I pitched up the formant, but I left the pitch where it was. So what it did was it opened up all the higher harmonic content and and I just sent that through a very short delay on triplets and and I sent that through a very very short reverb. And I sent a bit of this pitched up delayed reverberant thing into the three second delay. So now I had like both the, the dry signal and this processed wet signal running through the same delay end. And uh, there were two takes, so 
I pan them hard left and hard right. They're both mono. So it kind of gives this really nice bed for me to build things on top of. And you get that width and you get lushness. Now I wanted some effect tracks. Basically something so or uh, something that that just helps me build the tension through the score and I'm going to play the this is a demonstration the of effects wireless. stem dry and then I'll, I'll play the, the treated version so this is the dry stem completely unprocessed and dry Does anyone have any I uh, any questions so far about anything that I've said or shown? Anything? Okay. So um, the idea with the effects track was not to, you know, again play some guitars, send it through some reverb. So um, so for any instrument to tone, whether you you you're trying to do it through modeling synthesis or just in in real life. It's it's not just the, the instrument itself and and how you process it post, but it's about how you play it. So, <coughs> uh, considering most of this was done through an electric guitar, what I did was instead of using a pick, the first one uh, I used, um, you know, like a trimmer, or a this like is a demonstration regular of electric cast. shaver near the pickup of of the guitar, so it starts creating this hum. And the more you move it around, it st starts mildly distorting the, the 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 tone and the hum of it. And I used the slide on the other side to just kind of create some texture. And so I did two of those takes, and. And I did one of just playing the the tonic, cast. which was D, and uh, and oscillate in between that and the A. The reason why that fell under the FX track and not a part track was because I um I also I sent that through a reversed delay patch on Guitar Rig. I think uh, they have this plugin called Psychedelic Delay where you can reverse it so so together this is a demonstration of wirecast it starts creating this so you can kind of hear the slide it starts creating like this swarm of bees like this hum that to me kind of gave, gave some tone texture and 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 that nice steel-esque sound of 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 the guitar was nice instead of using you know like a reverse swish or like symbols okay considering this is just a half an hour demo sorry i'm just going to run through everything really quick uh this helix thing over here is is nothing apart from just the tonic being played and I sent it through a vibrato and a panned it left and right so when you listen to it it starts. This is a demonstration Not of making wire sound cast. One sec. So it's it's just this. So you start getting these little like rhythmic blips and bloops which also, I mean, it sounds random, but this with the effects track and the pads.
creates like this really nice bed for me. Something that, that most people would either use atmosphere or like atmosphere or alchemy to do. Given that there's a lot more work than, you know, like getting a preset and holding down one key on one of those synths, uh, it's, it's definitely more, f more fun to do. So uh, the next big sort of part of this project was getting percussions in and considering I, I wanted to stick to just using guitars. Uh, what I did was I sampled a few hits on an acoustic guitar using my hand or folk spoons, some other stuff. And, and then I dropped them into a battery just so it's programmable later to create this. You can clearly tell that it's sampled, but sampling it as opposed to playing it live gave me the um, gave me the license to be a little more creative with what I was playing as as opposed to trying to physically play something. I can't play this, and it's you know more quantized. It's on time. So I didn't pitch this down or I mean I tried pitching it down just so there's something in the in in the bottom this end. Is a demonstration of but wire I didn't because it just sounded muddy with the bass. So I'll and like a lot of reverb just would send it back into in into that same muddy sort of bed of the effects and the pads. So I'll show you guys how I would process something like this to fit into a much bigger mix because it kicks in around the same time when um when the when the heavier guitars kick in, which is, is pretty much the last the thing actually on this on this breakdown. So essentially I just played like one string, one note patterns four or five times around and stacked them. So if you solo out each pattern it's it's just like super loose, things like this. So it wasn't like full chords, but basically I chose one string or one riff to constantly play. The the reason why I did this instead of just playing full on chords or you know drop dropping my guitar down to D and doing the same thing is because the the whole um the whole idea is to take as many as many sort of loose ish layers uh to create this bigness in sound. So it sounds more like, like an orchestra or a symphony or something more than just one guitar kind of playing one part. A DT of of like guitar chords would sound big, but I felt like like certain things like bending this a little bit or bending continuously on certain takes like this one. Where it's sort of just bending and bending and bending. Wouldn't really hap happen if, if I just played power chords and because I'd be concentrating a lot more on keeping that chord structure and making sure that every time I bent, even though the fifths and the and the other notes bent in context. So this considering the whole song just has cast. D and A and this one F that comes in somewhere. Um I did three takes of bending you know uh D D an octave up and one of A and A an octave up and one of the higher D. So together it sounds a lot bigger in proportion than just
sorry so the last part of the distorted guitars is this was this the trumpety sound you were talking about no okay so what this is is one of my guitar takes reversed and stretched out or using flex time over so essentially it was a one bar thing I stretched it out from 41 to about I think that's 60 something so so it slows down and you kind of start getting like this those overtones don't really work out very, very well so you can cycle through a couple of those um, um, algorithms like complex complex pro beats and just see which which one sounds the best for for what you're trying to do because it it can be a very good this tool to sculpt something sonically as opposed to just using flex time to you know flex your musical parts into place and finally um for the to make those distorted guitars sound a lot bigger uh what 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 do you guys think i should i should do do you guys this have any suggestions anything cast. that you guys think would work like eqs or what what would you 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 guys do That's pretty much what I've done. I do have like multiple guitar tracks and they're panned left and right. Okay. This is a demonstration okay. of Wirecast. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you have a uh, reverb on one side, I mean, that's a good point, but if you have reverb on one side and nothing on the other side, what's gonna happen? is finally when you sit down to master it, your headroom on one side is going to be a lot lesser. And so your limiter is going to start sort of, like your whole mix is going to sound like this. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Mm -hmm. But then doesn't it sound like the guitars are like this? Okay. Okay, all right, that's a good suggestion. Anything else? That So reverbs, EQs, or anything that I should try? Okay, so I'm going to show you guys two things to make your mixes sound a lot fuller without losing too much headroom because uh, the reverb thing, uh, I used to do that before I used to use the doubler from Waves to kind of create width and give it a little bit. Or sometimes just a phaser plugin on one side or two separate reverbs. Uh, and like the bigger analog desks from your master section, you have um, you have these two s secondary monitor this outs. And something Wirecast. that a lot of engineers did back then was send this to a bus compressor and bring it back, but as a send. So I've set one of those up. The, the I'm using two 1176 style compressors over here because they're FET, so they're fast on the release, but very, very, very mild compression. So nothing heavy, nothing that's beating down my mix. And I'm sending everything barring my perks and this my is bass. Of so I'm just going to quickly pull that up. It's this quad channel, OK? And let's take a listen to the, to like a little bit. You see how it sounds a lot bigger, not just louder, but there's a lot more meat because we're muted. There's no glue, there's no life to it, right? It sounds all separate. And this kind of glues the whole thing together. 
it it brings the whole thing together because you're sending everything in the same amount on pre-fado, so your fado still controls your levels into this, and it just kind of starts uh, reducing gain on 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 your overall mix, and then you're just sort of doing a parallel compression where you bring it in this a little bit. A uh, for the percussions, um, there's a lot of high end, there's a lot of that noise. And I love using saturation distortion to get rid of that, not to distort it and to make it sound angry. So I have a f so I'm just using sound toy stuff today. And we'll go from like mild to less mild to like hardcore. So this is a demonstration of wirecast. One second. All right, so let me just start playing this. So I'm going to bypass everything first. Okay, so this kind of how it sounds, and you can hear how there's that sh 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 sound that keeps sort of coming and going. So, like a very mild saturation something that emulates like not so much saturation but like a tape plugin or something what what you can do is you can counter those really weird harmonics on top to kind of smooth it out to something like this so i'm going to take it back and this is a demonstration of wirecast That's without. That's with. Do you listen to that first sort of like tuck that that hit, and the second shk that comes through. Notice how they're like a little unbalanced. Without. This is a demonstration of wire. And with. It's a little more, you know, with each other. Then I use a little bit of decapitator just to get that low hit out. The idea with anything like compression or EQ or whatever it is, I mean, leave it to your engineers to take care of that. But when you're using it, use it correctively to kind of take care of, you know, like bad sounding samples, bad sounding something else, something that's not sitting. So don't like hard compress, don't compress too this much, don't saturate too much. Cast. But something mild like this always kind of helps. If you notice, it's just super mild. I'm using about three from here. And what I've done is I've taken the tone from that to something that's a little darker, just so I can get a little bit of the boom sound from the bottom. And finally, I'm using a little bit of this, which is the Devil Lock plug. And that this, this, this is like proper distortion, I guess, and on a fast release. So what this sounds like is, you see how it's sort of making all those hits come out a lot more than just keeping them within. So without any of this, and my volume isn't this different, is it's, it's not loud, it's wire. just fuller sounding. So with everything. See how it kind of just fits in with everything else and it fills out the space. All right, that's pretty much it. Thank you. This is a demonstration of Wirecast.
This is a demonstration of Wirecast. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. is a demonstration of Wirecast. Check, 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 check. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. This Please is a demonstration one, one, of Wirecast. This is a demonstration 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 of Wirecast.
This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Just going to check the guitars for one time, yeah? This is a demonstration of Wirecast. It's all good here. Input one. Between. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Another input? Input two? I was just using it before. It was fine. Same cable. Same cable. Yeah. The volume is up. Two. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Let's try another cable real quick and then if it doesn't work, we'll just start. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Rubbish. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Interesting. Input one doesn't work at all. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Let's try. Maybe this is not. You did. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. It's not showing up.
This is a demonstration of Wirecast. 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 Spy films for espionage films. Uh, what, what do we know about it? Any Anyone who's familiar with the genre, familiar with seeing some movies, know some, some famous TV? James Bond 007, this right? This is a demonstration of Wirecast. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Mike, did I hate? Sorry. Check. So I've mentioned, a f we've, we've uh, just spoken about a few very iconic 
um, spy or espionage themes, okay. right? What do what do some of these have in common, if anything? The 007, the Mission Impossible theme, the Pink Panther theme, right? What do these three really iconic, really famous themes have in common? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Tension. Hooks. Sure. Yeah. This what are you doing there with the light? <laughs> I'm kidding, that's fine. It's like, it wasn't me. <laughs> Just pick one and, and stick with it. <laughs> I feel like I'm, in a, like I'm in, a, like in a disco or something. Right, so uh, what else? Are you, are, you, are you really done? Okay, um, so what else? Besides, you know, two really good points there, right? Diminish, augmented chords. Obviously, they're, they all have these very specific, uh, well, memorable hooks. This is a demonstration or motifs, of wire cast. What do you want to call them? Just think about that while we listen to this outro. Um, what about inst instrumentation? Can anyone pick, or well, when you try and recall um, some of the instruments that were used for any of these three themes that we mentioned. Does anything? This Very good. Yeah, trumpets. Of wire cast. Fat sounds. Okay. Strings. strings. Okay, what kind of strings? Like what, what sort of? Oh, okay. Right. Staccato. Staccato strings, staccato what? Staccato strings, okay. Okay. Not always, oh, sure. What? Say one. This is a demonstration Mallets? Sure. of wire yeah. cast. Very good, okay, yeah. Cool, okay. So let's, let's do this. Let's have a listen to some of these iconic.